church to be tested. But I'm going to give you a quiz this morning to see how many of you can get some of these answers right. I'll start with an easy question. How many books are in the Old Testament? 39. 39. 39. If you didn't know that, easy way to remember. Old has three letters, and Testament has nine letters. 39. Now you remember. How many books in the New Testament? Yes, confirmation teacher. Dan, 27. 27 books in the New Testament, an easy way to remember. Old Testament, old, 3, 9, 3 times 9 is 27. You add them all up, how many books in the Bible, not counting the Apocrypha? 66. Good job. Okay. What is the first word in the Bible? In. That's right, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He went in. <laughs> Very smart child. <laughs> what is the last word in the Christian scripture? What? Amen. Amen. Very good. <laughs> See, you guys, you're learning here. What is the oldest copy of the Bible that we have? About what century? Sixteenth? I heard sixteenth. Anybody else? Fourth century. Wow. And it is the Codex Vaticanus, and guess where it's held? In the Vatican Library. They have it there. So, along with all the, all the other secrets of all of the Christian church. <laughs> what book of the Bible does not mention the name of God or the Lord or anything like that? Esther, very good, Karen. <laughs> Esther, okay, couple, couple more. The shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept, right, very good. What is the longest word in the Bible? It's from Isaiah 8.1. Mahar Shalah Hashbaz. That's the longest word, I didn't know that either. I didn't look that up. So, uh, you know, the, the, the sad thing is the Bible, it is one of the, well, the exciting thing is the Bible is the most purchased book around. It far out surpasses any other book. It's also the number one most stolen book in stores, too, just so you know. And the reality is most of us don't know our Bible too well, except for Karen. She knows her Bible better than anybody else I know. And there's a reason for that. This is a book of Bibles, okay? Bibles in a bag. These are in my office, and they're not all of them. But there's a reason why we get put off with the Bible sometimes. This was my first Bible I received when I was, let's see, what year? 1979? Well, I would have been eight years old. So it was given to all the eight, eight years old in the church. And the problem with this Bible is a revised standard version. There were a few pictures in, but the, there's nothing else. It just looks, all it was was words, words, words. They didn't even have red letters of Jesus' words. So, you know, I mean, I tried to read this, it just did nothing for me. And then a couple of years later, they came out with <coughs> this wonderful book, the Good News Translation, and the church got this for everyone, this cool, handy dandy denim uh, covered Bible. It, had, it has pictures in, it's easy to understand. I even got this cool, very late 70s, early 80s, Jesus is Lord bookmark. You know, I read this, and then in Vacation Bible School in 1983, I won this little tiny New Testament because I brought the most friends to Vacation Bible School. <laughs> <laughs> when I led youth group in Ohio, this is the Bible we use, the youth Bible, 
has some great illustrations and ideas to talk about with kids about in their, in their daily lives. Oh, I forgot this one. In 1989, when I went away to college, I started going to different churches. My father's a Lutheran pastor, and I, sort of, I was going back and forth between the Episcopal Church, the Lutheran Church, and the Roman Catholic Church. And I thought for a while I was going to be a Roman Catholic when I told my father that. Two and a half hours later, there was a knock at my door, and he was saying, don't do it. He's a Lutheran pastor. But he gave me the St. Joseph's edition of the Bible. It says, we love you with all our love and understanding, mom and dad. I didn't read this. <laughs> my first study Bible, given by my father, a Lutheran Concordia study Bible. When I was ordained to the diaconate, I was given this Bible, another Bible when I was ordained to the priesthood. When I was called to be a rector at my institution, Jan and Hal gave me this Bible, the message. They were the wardens at the time. This is a paraphrase. It's easy to, easy to read. It's not a translation, it's a paraphrase. And last but not least, my study Bible that I read all the time. I use it in seminary. It is filled with cheat sheets in here. We were told we could do that. Uh, it's falling apart because it's well used. It went from inaccessible to accessible. You know, D.L. Moody, the great, great, great evangelist who founded the Moody Bible Institute, said that of 100 men, forgive the, the gender quote, but of 100 men, only one man will read the Bible. But he said the other 99 will read the Christian. So in other words, we can know our Bible, but if we don't live our life in Christ as Christians, people are gonna just look at us and say what hypocrites we are. And you know what I'm talking about. You know, you go to work, you know people that say, oh, I'm such a great Christian, and then the stuff they do in the week, you look and scratch your head and go, huh? It's like Tony Soprano, and this, you know? <laughs> he went to church, wasn't a good Christian, you know? It's, we need to live our faith, but as, but as Christians, our faith is grounded first and foremost in scripture. Thomas Hooker, the great Anglican divine, said we understand God by a three-legged stool, by understanding God's wills, by first scripture, then reason and tradition, but we always start with scripture. The fact is, though, most of us have never read the full Bible. Wave, show of hands, be truthful. How many here have actually read the Bible cover to cover? Um, one, two, three, four, five. Notice I did not read my, raise my hand. I've tried. I've failed. Because I get to Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, and I get all those lists, and I go, ugh, and I just put it aside. But it's my loss. Because you think TV shows are filled with uh, sex and scandal and everything. You don't know nothing until you've read your Bible. <laughs> it is filled with murders. It is filled with battles and wars. It's filled with uh, everything you could possibly imagine. You get lusty poems from the Song of Solomon. You know, I mean, you name it, it's, it's in there. The sad fact is, you can only have a discussion with somebody who knows the Bible and defend your faith only if you yourself know the Bible. And so today, we start at St. Jude, and I'm challenging everyone that is here to a 90-day Bible challenge. If you can read 12 pages a day, of course, if you have a large print Bible, it's going to be more pages, but it's large print. So if you have a very small print Bible, it's less than 12 pages a day. 
But if you can read the 12 pages a day, you can read the whole Bible, cover to cover, minus the Apocrypha, which is uh, in between uh, books, in 90 days. Actually, in only 88 days. It gives you two grace periods. <coughs> Now, I'm challenging us to do this during this Easter tide for a reason. One, when people think about the Episcopal Church, they often say, oh, those heathens, they don't know their Bible. Well, actually, we read more Bible in church than any other denomination. Not only our, our four lessons, the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalm, and the Gospel, but the prayers that we have, the Eucharistic prayer, is filled with direct quotations from the Bible. But not only that, we are very uneducated when it comes to knowing what is in Scripture. And so I'm going to give you some hints about this. Hint number one, find a time during the day and do it. It will take about a half an hour. Don't tell me you don't have a half hour sometime in your day. You know, if you commute on the train, put it on the train, you know? If you're on your lunch break, eat while you're reading, you know? If you just sit around at night vegging in front of the TV, put the TV off for a half an hour, okay? But set aside a time. <laughs> Number two, when you get to the list of the names, skip them. <laughs> it's not important, you know? It's, it's just a list of names. Just, just go ahead, skip that list, browse the list. Number three, when you get to Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. Leviticus is filled with all the old biblical laws. And you're going to be like, like going and saying to, just, just saying to yourself, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Just skim it. You do what you do in college, you know? You skim. And then once you get past that, mark my words, once you get into Kings, uh, it starts because you get some great, great, great stories. And Genesis and Exodus is just filled with wonderful stuff. Don't beat yourself up if you miss the day. Remember, you get two grace days. But do this for yourself. And we do it together in this Easter tide so we can really live in the resurrection. If you don't have a Bible, go out and get one. Stop at Barnes and Barnes today. Okay? Go to BibleGateway.com. You can read it online. If you don't like to read, go to audible.com and download a Bible. Go to the library, get a, uh, uh, an audio Bible. The list of the readings are in your bulletin. Take it home, mark it off. You might be surprised about how much you will learn. My hope for you is that your Bible will be like my Bible, which is starting to fall apart because it's so well used. You know, we can live our life in doubt and wondering like Thomas did. We're not gonna see the risen Christ in person until he comes again, but we'll know him in scripture. Give yourself the gift. Take the 90 day challenge and be transformed. Amen. Amen. Oh, just so you know, I probably have another 10 copies of the Bible in my office and at least 15 other copies of the Bible at home. So I think I have a few Bibles. Can I borrow one?